Hey guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2025 Honda Civic, courtesy of Sioka Honda of Hanover in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because there are actually plenty of changes for the 2025 model year. It's a very good looking sedan as well. And of course, you got the legendary Civic name. So it's been around for quite a while at this point. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a couple different trim levels for the 2025 Civic. First one being the LX starting at $24,250, which by the way is a modest $300 bump from the 2024 model year. Then you have the Sport being the one we are in today starting at $26,250. And yes, if you're wondering, the EX and the Touring trim levels are gone for 2025. So also big change for 2025 is there is now one power plant for the Civic. Now there is a hybrid configuration as well but that I always reserve for its own video so we're not going to be touching on that one but powering the Civic is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 150 horsepower at 6400 rpm 133 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters if you go with the sport so you do get the paddle shifters only with that sport trim level zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.2 seconds with MPG numbers differing actually between the two trim levels so for the LX it's going to be a little more coming in at 32 in the city 41 on the highway then for the sport 31 in the city 39 on the highway but either way taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in the Civic did want to mention to you guys the drive modes this is a little toggle switch located directly behind the shifter drive modes will include econ normal and sport adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the climate control settings and so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, set it up in first simulated gear. Let's go. Huh. Okay, I actually don't mind them because they actually simulate an automatic pretty darn nicely. So I know this is a CVT and technically we're not shifting through any gears and I've driven CVTs with paddle shifters before and a lot of times there's no change whatsoever like with Subaru for example they have CVT transmissions they have paddle shifters and when you shift through the simulated gears it doesn't really feel like you're shifting through anything it just still feels like a CVT and it doesn't do anything however with Honda they actually kind of make it feel like you're shifting through an automatic like there's actual gears here so that was kind of cool. They did that really, really well. They were instantaneous, so I don't mind them. But anyway, let's now go ahead and find one more straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test with the Civic having full control. And let's see how quickly we can get our 2025 Civic here up to speed. All right, here we go in three, two, one, go. It's loud. Uh, that's not that bad i mean it is it's not the quickest thing in the world but what i liked about it is there was a little bit of pep there at the beginning because it's not turbocharged there's no turbo delay or anything like that that you have to worry about so that was kind of nice but yeah having said that 0.69.2 is certainly not the quickest thing in the world so it's one of those things that uh, what i usually hear in the comment section is that you get used to it you learn how to drive your vehicle you learn what it's capable of and uh you end up being perfectly fine but yeah not the quickest thing in the world but that also means though since it's not turbocharged is you're probably going to get a lot better reliability with the sport and the lx so um yeah that's a good thing but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front discs in the back 10.2 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes that comes in at 122 feet which is perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that as far as uh braking fuel goes i love it it feels really good it's definitely a little bit on the firmer side of things it's not a soft braking feel it honestly feels just right for what the Civic is. So I'll just put it that way. But then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, of course. As far as ride quality goes, it's been 
yeah, you can feel a little bit more of the road, I will say, in this Civic compared to some of the competitors. Um, so it, it's been pretty average, we'll say that. It's one of those things where I know the Corolla, for example, offers a smoother ride than this. But where the Civic does shine compared to the Corolla and some of the other competitors is the steering feel is just brilliant. So it's weighted more on the heavier side of things. It instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. It's kind of reminiscent of the Mazda 3 sedan, which I love. That's such an amazing steering feel in there as well. This is right up there with it, man. This instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. Uh, competitors like the Corolla, for example, it's a loosey-goosey steering feel. So a lot more emotion when it comes to the handling and the steering feel, at least in the Civic compared to others. So I am a huge fan of that i will say that it's just the ride quality but anyways uh, as far as cabin noise goes we are going 30 miles per hour right now you get a little bit of road noise it's nothing that would personally bother me wind noise is definitely held at bay so pretty much par for the course there then touching on rear visibility because of the shape of the civic you certainly should not have any issues whatsoever when it comes to rear visibility there but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Honda Civic. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Honda Civic finished in platinum white pearl. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one with us here today. But let me start with, there are some revised cosmetic changes for the 2025 model year. In case you guys didn't notice already, the most prominent, in my opinion, is those bottom two corners on the front bumper there. Rather than having more black cladding and the fog lights, uh, fog lights have been eliminated, of course, and there is less cladding black cladding and it actually looks a lot cleaner in my personal opinion a lot cleaner of a look so I actually like it so I like the reworked front bumper you also have reworked headlight housings there as well just slightly on the headlight housings but I can tell the difference but as always let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the VIN first character is the number two indicating that the new 2025 Civic is built and assembled in Canada eh but starting up front LED headlights do come standard for both trim levels so you gotta love that you do get LED LED daytime running lights with that as well, along with the automatic feature and automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there. Again, fog lights gone for 2025, and you got to love that very low hood line up front as well. One of the best looking front ends, if not the best looking front end for the compact car segment, in my personal opinion. But Anyhow, let me know what you guys think of the refresh look up front in the comment section below. I love reading your comments, but that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. And so now since we are around to the side of the Civic, black window surrounds do come standard. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors is going to be the standard configuration. However, those side mirrors will be finished in gloss black, of course, for the sport trim level at least. Heated side mirrors then also coming standard on the sport, which by the way is new for 2025. Sport trim level did not get heated side mirrors for 2024 but yet it does for 2025 so wanted to mention that then taking a look down at the wheel setup of course they're going to differ dependent upon the trim level 16 inch steel wheels with covers for that lx and then 18 inch gloss black alloys for the sport but that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top there you will find a body colored shark fin antenna led taillights do come standard for the civic for added illumination at night you gotta love that I like that sport trim level badging as well just above the passenger side taillight there there is a single exhaust outlet it is going to be finished with a chrome tip only if you go with that sport trim level so I love that look. I think it definitely looks good. Where most of the segment is just simply tucking away the exhaust. So I like it. But nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around to the back of the Civic, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob, there's a button on the trunk itself, and there's actually a button on the driver's side door then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is cargo lighting back there, of course, and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire, which you guys know I always prefer. But then make your way up to 
the rear legroom that comes in at 37.4 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the second row there rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard on the sport trim level which again is new for the sport for 2025 you couldn't get that on the sport trim level for 2024 so that is pretty darn cool no rear ventilation no usb charging ports unfortunately though but then make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating does come standard for both trim levels and in case you're wondering because i'm sure somebody is wondering how do you get leather or heated seats that's going to be reserved for the hybrid civic so again that'll be in a separate video when i find one of them and get to review it but overall as far as seat comfort goes it was okay it was just okay. I would have loved to have seen power adjustable seats because, of course, you're going to get the most seat comfort with that. But honestly, the seating, it gets the job done. I don't have any issues there. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. And it's going to be leather wrapped for the sport trim level only, otherwise wrapped in urethane, of course, for the LX. Then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. you got your Honda logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear trunk there. That circular button that says hold, that's going to be your remote start which comes standard on the sport trim level only but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for both trims so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there and so once started up when it comes to the gauges it is a digital gauge cluster you gotta love it and there are steering wheel mounting controls found on the left side of the steering wheel to control what is up there you can switch things up a little bit there but of course it has trip a trip b your tachometer is on your left speedometer is on your right and you got a giant digital speedometer front and center along with speed limit recognition so it gives you the speed limit of any given road outside temperature pretty much everything you could possibly want on the gauges the other cool thing is it's going to adjust the colors just slightly depending upon the drive mode that you put it in for example if you put it in sport it's going to give you some red hues um, and pretty much econ and normal look the same but anyway so wanted to pitch that as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here automatic climate control actually comes standard for both trim levels meaning just set the temperature it's going to automatically hit that temperature for you so that's kind of cool you also have led interior lighting here i just saw that that is pretty stinking cool as well sport pedals are going to come with the sport trim level of course leather wrap shift knob coming with the sport as well and actually the Civic didn't do too bad with interior quality. Now it's not perfect. So what I do like though, is everything surrounding the shifter and the cup holders is finished in this nice texturized kind of uh, black finish. Um, they could have left that a matte black or a matte gray plastic, but they didn't. They give it a nice texturized finish. So well done Honda for that. I love that. Just in front of the shifter, you got a little bit of rubberized storage. You got a couple USB charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet. Just behind the cup holders, you do have a decent amount of space actually within the center armrest so more so than a lot of the competition so i like that as well now it's the doors that i wish they would have uh, kind of approved upon a little bit so just around the uh, power window buttons and also just behind the door handle here it's a matte black plastic and that's what i wish they would have finished um, the same finish that they put around the cup holders i wish they would have brought that onto the doors as well that would have been stinking cool i like the gloss black trim just above the passenger side glove box surrounding all the air vents here that looks pretty darn good as well the honey mesh design so overall they did okay they could have done better with the doors but i love the finishes surrounding the shifter and the cup holders so yeah i will say that but so now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen it is going to be a seven inch color touch screen display coming standard bluetooth and audio streaming as well android auto apple carplay of course and you also can adjust your radio information up there so when it comes to the sound systems of course each trim level gets its own sound system there will be four speakers and 160 watts for the LX and then eight speakers and 180 watts for the sport. So having said that, you guys know we got the sport with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out our eight speaker sound system we have with us here today. It's okay. I mean, it's gonna be a lot better than the four speaker sound system. The clarity was pretty darn good. Bass was pretty average, but it's just an okay sound system and also the other thing was that was fm radio so i wish they would have had sirius xm hooked up to this thing or something because that of course would have been better but 
Um, yeah, it's okay. It gets the job done. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Civic in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board. You also get a couple different or a few different views found in the bottom left hand corner there. So that's pretty cool as well. But that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so IIHS top safety pick. That's a heck of a start right there. You got to love that. Front side side current airbags do come standard. You get driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children. For the rear car seats rear child door locks top pressure monitoring system but also coming standard honda sensing that gives you a collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise control lane keep assist for collision warning lane departure warning traffic jam assist traffic sign recognition and a driver attention monitoring system then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the civic excellent design i like the refresh i think it looks a lot cleaner up front at least so definitely a big fan of the design the second this thing came out i knew this design was going to absolutely crush it a uh, good fuel economy as well nothing wrong with that great steering feel i love the steering feel i love the handling in the civic it's definitely nice as far as room for improvement goes the ride quality is definitely not as good as some of the competitors so we'll say that rear ventilation would have been nice but having said that None of the competitors offer rear ventilation either. That's just one of those things that I always like to look for. So that's just me, but rear USB charging ports at least would be nice. And some competitors do offer that. So anywho, that pretty much rounds out this review, guys. Let me know what you think of the new 2025 Civic in the comments section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that's what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.